I am determined to see. I am determined to see. I am determined to see. And great indeed will be our reward. What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect. As it operates in the world, as it operates in the world, I am determined to see, I am determined to see. I am determined to see. Can that be our commitment? Well, that's going to be our commitment for today as we uh, move forward in our Let's go look at our lesson, lesson 20 in A Course in Miracles workbook for students. We're reading from the, not the original edition, I've said that for the last three years, uh, the Foundation for Inner Peace version. I am determined to see, and I'm forgiveness teacher from the Ozarks, Miracle Willie. Thank you all so much for joining me today and studying. I am determined to see. We've been quite casual about our practice periods thus far. There has been virtually no attempt to direct the time for undertaking them. Minimal effort has been required, and not even active cooperation and interest have been asked. This approach has been intentional and very carefully planned. We've not lost sight of the crucial importance of the reversal of your thinking. The salvation of the world depends on the reversal of our thinking. Yet you will not see if you regard yourself as being coerced and if you give in to resentment and opposition. So he's, and then he goes on in our next paragraph, he's going to say this is our first attempt to introduce structure. And he's going to want us to try to bring this to our memory through the day every half hour we're going to, we're, we're to say, I'm determined to see. And that'll be our practice period for the day. So just little moments. You don't have to stop doing anything. Just say to yourself, I'm determined to see. And if you're practiced for sitting down quietly and meditating morning and evening, I'd encourage you to continue doing that. But he's not requiring that at this point. We'll look at the lesson a little closer. But let's go back and look in chapter 3, The Innocent Perception. Miracles as True Perception, Section 2. I've stated that the basic concepts referred to in this course are not matters of degree. Certain fundamental concepts cannot be understood in terms of opposites. It is impossible to conceive of light and darkness or everything and nothing as joint possibilities. They are all true or all false. It is essential that you realize your thinking will be erratic until a firm commitment to one or the other is made. A firm commitment to darkness or nothing, however, is impossible. No one has ever lived who has not experienced some light or some thing. <laughs> He's referring to all of us are um, uh, our, 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 our identity, our, our birth, our, our beingness at all is from God. So we all have to have a little bit of light and a little bit of, the, of reality, of something. No one has ever lived who has not experienced some light and some thing. No one, therefore, is able to deny truth totally, even if he thinks he can. Paragraph 2. Innocence is not a partial attribute. It is not real until it is total. The partly innocent are apt to be quite foolish at times. It is not until their innocence becomes a viewpoint with universal application that it becomes wisdom. Catch that. It is not until their innocence, that they see innocence in everything, not until it is not until their innocence becomes a viewpoint with universal application that it becomes wisdom. Innocent or true perception means that you never misperceive and always see truly. More simply, it means that 
you never see what does not exist and always see what does. And that's where he's leading us to, to be perfect even as our Father in heaven is perfect. We, we can learn to follow the inner guidance of the Holy Spirit and see, see the, the innocence in everything and not, not see miscreations or misperceive as he calls it here. Paragraph three. When you lack confidence in what someone will do, you are attesting to your belief that he is not in his right mind. Catch that. When you lack confidence in what someone will do, you are attesting to the belief that he is not in his right mind. You're seeing him through your eyes of the ego and you're seeing his ego. Instead, we want to see the, the, the reality that can't make any mistakes. So again, when you lack confidence in what someone will do, you are attesting to your belief that he is not in his right mind. This is hardly a miracle-based frame of reference. It also has the disastrous effect of denying the power of the miracle. The miracle perceives everything as it is. If nothing but the truth exists, right-minded seeing cannot see anything but perfection. I have said that only what God creates or what you create with the same will has any real existence. This, then, is all the innocent can see. They do not suffer from distorted perception. Paragraph 4. You are afraid of God's will because you have used your own mind, which he created in the likeness of his own, to miscreate. The mind can miscreate only when it believes it is not free. And, and listen how, how, how it's not free. Who, who's in... Who, who's taken it um, prisoner? Think about that. The mind can miscreate only when it believes it is not free. An imprisoned mind is not free because it is possessed. <laughs> possessed or held back by itself. The very beliefs that it had free will to accept, it used them to imprison itself because it accepted erroneous beliefs and now it's bound by what it accepted. Nothing can, uh, let's see, where are we at here? You are afraid of God's will because you have used your own mind, which he created in the likeness of his own, to miscreate. The mind can miscreate only when it believes it is not free. An imprisoned mind is not free because it is possessed or held back by itself. And the word imprisoned is in quotes because really it's not in prison. It's just in our dreams. But those dreams play out in this world and seem to be real, knock on wood. An imprisoned mind is not free because it is possessed or held back by itself. It is therefore limited and the will is not free to assert itself. To be one is to be of one mind or one or will. To be one is to be of one mind or will. When the will of the Sonship and the Father are one, their perfect accord is heaven. Father, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Well, let's follow God's will because that's our own will. It's what really makes this happen. When you wish to do something and you're sure that it doesn't go against um, the way that God thinks. Remember he said there'll be no fear? <laughs> <clears throat> Nothing. When the will of the Sonship and the Father are one, the perfect accord is, or their perfect accord is heaven. Five, nothing can prevail against the Son of God who commends his spirit into the hands of his Father. Can we do that? Nothing can prevail against the Son of God who commends his spirit into the hands of his Father. And I think about Jesus dying on the cross. He commended his spirit into the hands of the Father and he rose from the dead. He proved that resurrection is our reality when we commend our spirits into the hands of our, our source, our creator, our father. Or our mother, if you want to think of it that way, that's fine. 
By doing this, the mind awakens from its sleep and remembers its creator. So again, nothing can prevail against a son of God who commends his spirit into the hands of his father. By doing this, the mind awakens from its sleep and remembers its creator. All sense of separation disappears. The Son of God is part of the Holy Trinity, but the Trinity itself is one. There is no confusion within its levels because they are of one mind and one will. This single purpose creates perfect integration and establishes the peace of God. Yet the vision can be perceived only by the truly innocent. Yet this vision can be perceived only by the truly innocent. You're going to have to see innocence in yourself and everyone in order to get this vision that brings the peace of God, this, this one-mindedness that, that the Holy Spirit uh, is offering. And, and, and it's the love, the glue that connects us all anyway. The single purpose, this single purpose, let's back it up one more sentence. There is no confusion within its levels, the Trinity, because they are of one mind and one will. This single purpose creates perfect integration and establishes the peace of God. Yet this vision can be perceived only by the truly innocent. Because their hearts are pure, the innocent defend true perception instead of defending themselves against it. Understanding the lesson of the atonement, they are without the wish to attack and therefore they see truly. This is what the Bible means when it says, when he shall appear, or be perceived, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And that's quote out of 1 John chapter 3, verse 2. So again on that, understanding the lesson of the atonement, or the interlocking chain of forgiveness, Understanding the lesson of the atonement, they are without the wish to attack. And therefore, they see truly. This is what the Bible means when it says, When he shall appear or be perceived, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. In the last paragraph for this section 6, The way to correct distortions is to withdraw your faith in them and invest it only in what is true. That makes sense, doesn't it? The way to correct distortions is to withdraw your faith in the distortions and invest it, invest your faith only in what is true. You cannot make untruth true. If you are willing to accept what is true in everything you perceive, you let it be true for you. Truth overcomes all error. And those who live in error and emptiness can never find lasting solace, lasting peace. If you perceive truly, you are canceling out misperceptions in yourself and in others simultaneously. If you perceive truly, you are canceling out misperceptions in yourself and in others simultaneously. Because you see them as they are, you offer them your acceptance of their truth so they can accept it for themselves. You might see their, their, their perfection before they see it in this world. This is the healing that the miracle induces. <laughs> wow, what a beautiful reading. Okay, now before we read our uh, lesson, I am determined to see, but we're supposed to be saying that, you know, a couple times an hour, he says. Try for every half hour, he said. We haven't read that yet, but I'm giving you a little heads up. Okay. Holy days on... Uh, holy Holidays. Holy days. Uh, and observances around the world. Holy days. Holidays and observances, I found. It's Bald Eagle Appreciation Day, which we talked about bald eagles recently. The Haley... Adus is the genus, Leucocephalus is the species, and they usually live within about two and a half miles or closer to water because that's what they feed on, uh, the water animals, mainly fish, 
and ducks. Uh, and they make nests. They make nests in trees and on cliffs, or in uh, you know usually within that close distance to water. Uh, camcorder day. Well, we kind of kind of dated now. It's usually our cell phone day now, huh? <laughs> uh, inauguration day. Well, this year in 2024, it'll it won't have an inauguration day this year, but next year we sure will. Who's going to be president of the United States? Uh, International Day of Acceptance. Learn to accept everyone as perfect. International Day of Acceptance. Learn to accept everyone as perfect. Uh, when you lack confidence in what someone will do, you're attesting to the belief that he is not in his right mind. So that, that we just read that in, uh, that was a, in uh, sentence one of paragraph three. So, so International Day of Acceptance. Learn to accept everyone as perfect. Well, that'd be a, a, a wonderful thing to do. No, no, we learned yesterday there's no evil, so you might as well take it another step and just see them all as beautiful and perfect. <laughs> uh, National Bill Cosby Sweater Day, and that's loud, colorful sweaters he used to wear on his show back in the 80s. National Butter Crunch Day. Uh, National Cheese Lovers Day, and I found a vegan cheese uh, recipe on, um, oh, it, it was, uh, where did I find that? I Did I not write down? Yeah, oh, surely I did. Oh, yeah, uh, thehiddenveggies.com, and it was Monica Davis who came up with this, uh, the hidden, and it's um, a can of full-fat coconut milk, a half cup of water, Two tablespoons of agar 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 powdered, two tablespoons of nutritional yeast. Uh, did I say one cup of warm water? I don't think I did. Uh, one quarter teaspoon of salt, a half teaspoon of lemon juice, and a quarter teaspoon of garlic powder. Bring it to a boil and stir it for six minutes, and then let it cool for two hours. And, and before you in between the boiling it and the letting it cool, pour it into a, whatever mold you want it to look like. And you've got vegan cheese that, according to this, it tastes better than, uh, uh, it's very good. It, it, she said it goes goes quickly. Even people that aren't vegans like it, which is, that says a lot. Um, pro, that's provolone. Uh, smoked Gouda, you can make just by tweaking the recipe a little bit, as well as mozzarella, cheddar, pepper jack, and garlic herb. So I thought, well, that was some interesting stuff. Uh, National Coffee Break Day. Uh, National Disc Jockey Day. National Use Your Gift Card Day. Penguin Awareness Day. Uh, penguins are in the family. Is that Sfef... Sfenes... Sfenes... And the, uh, there's, there's uh, how many? There's 18, approximately 18 species, six genera. Uh, the, um, the emperor, the emperor, uh, very well-known uh, type of uh, penguin, is the Aptenodidus, that's the genus, Forstivia, Forstivi, Forstivi. And uh, I found that on SeaWorld.org. A lot about, if you want to learn more about penguins, good article there. Uh, soup Swap Day. Basically, that's, you know, have a, a, a potluck supper and invite your friends and all bring different kinds of soup and taste a little bit and go home with a bunch of soup. Eat everybody. Uh, take a Walk Outdoors Day. Underwater Parks Day. And that's uh, California. And in our Permaculture for Beginners, which I'm, I'm thinking I probably, since I can't find the publisher or the author and ask them permission, I'm going to use it as a guide. And I would encourage you to buy the book, though. It's not, it's probably only a couple bucks. Get it online. Uh, Permaculture for Beginners by Carrie Mitchell. And I would encourage you just to get, I'm going to still go go through it. But I'm not going to read it verbatim, 
and because I'm afraid I might be, you know, she may not want me to. So I, I would, but I do want to use it as a guide. And today we're it's going to talk about hoverflies, and and it says that uh, that they eat mainly pollen, but their larval offspring feed on aphids and other uh, detrimental uh, small insects. They tend to habitate uh, some plants. Oh, the same plants and flowers that ladybugs and parasitic wasps live live in, and the hoverflies are Allograpta oblique, and I'll I'll put that in the description below. I might may not be pronouncing it properly. And then in our uh, edible landscaping, which I'd also encourage you to get one of their books, uh, they're the. You know, order something from them, or 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 call them and tell them you want a book, uh, or email them. Because we are going to go through this whole book this year, uh, and we're ready for John's elderberry. John's produces more fruit and earlier than other varieties. Very large clusters of medium-sized berries, especially good for jelly and elderberry elixir. Larger plant than Adams pollinates with other native elderberries, very large flower heads, height six foot to 12 foot, space eight to 10 foot circles, zones three through nine. And the reason that I like um, uh, edible landscaping so much is just because they have already, they, they only put ones that are pretty hardy. They don't, if they take a lot of sprays and stuff, they won't show up in this book. And our word for peace and Cherokee is Navadohi Yadav. Navadohi Yadav. And I'm sure I'm not doing that well, even though I do have a little Cherokee blood in my, in my, my, my great grandmother was Cherokee. I sh I'd like to learn a little more about our, our Cherokee heritage. I am determined to see. We've been quite casual about our practice periods thus far. There's been virtually no attempt to direct the time for undertaking them. Minimal effort has been required, and not even active cooperation and interest have been asked. This approach has been intentional and very carefully planned. We have not lost sight of the crucial importance of reversing your thinking. The salvation of the world depends on it. Yet you will not see if you regard yourself as being coerced, and if you give in to resentment and opposition. This is our first attempt to introduce structure. Do not misconstrue it as an effort to exert force or pressure. You want salvation. You want to be happy. You want peace. You do not have them now because your mind is totally undisciplined and you cannot distinguish between, between joy and sorrow, pleasure and pain, love and fear. You are now learning how to tell them apart and great indeed will be your reward. Your decision to see is all that vision requires. Your decision to see is all that vision requires. Remember, every desire is a prayer. You, so let's, let's be wanting, let's, let's say this with a, as a prayer. I'm determined to see. Your decision to see is all that vision requires. What you want is yours. Do not mistake the little effort that is asked of you for an indication that our goal is of little worth. Can the salvation of the world be a trivial purpose? And can the world be saved if you are not? God has one son, and he is the resurrection and the life. His will is done because all power is given him in heaven and on earth. In your determination to see, is vision given you? The exercises for today consist in reminding yourself throughout the day that you want to see. Today's idea also tacitly implies the recognition that you do not see now. Therefore, as you repeat the idea, you are stating that you are determining to change your present state for a better one, and one you really want. Repeat today's idea slowly and positively at least twice an hour today, attempting to do so every half an hour. Do not be distressed if you forget to do so, but make a real effort to remember. The extra repetition should be applied to any situation 
person or event that upsets you. If they upset you, just say, well, I'm determined to see. I'm not going to let this bother me and think of them as evil. I'm going to see their perfection, their innocence. Do not be distressed if you forget to say your, your idea, but make a real effort to remember to say, I am determined to see. The extra repetition should be applied to any situation, person, or event that upsets you. You can see them differently, and you will. What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect as it operates in the world. Okay, well, let's uh, close our song today. Close with our song. Just take this little song with you and try to hum it all day and try to keep your keep your idea in mind. I am determined to see. I am determined to see. I am determined to see. And great indeed will be our reward. What you desire, you will see. Such is the real law of cause and effect. As it operates in the world, as it operates in the world, I am determined to see, I am determined to see, I am determined to see, and great indeed will be our reward, what you desire you will see, such is the real law cause and effect as it operates in the world as it operates in the world I am determined to see 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 I am determined to see. And our Cherokee word for peace, Navadohi Yadav. I am determined to see, Navadohi Yadav.